Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Improvised session once again. I received this YouTube comment on Saturday, if I remember correctly, and it really piqued my interest. Um, I'm going to write out the question. We are going to take a look at the limit as x approaches zero of x factorial to the one of x power. Okay, this in itself looks already quite good. OP said that this is going to go to a very nice limit. This piqued my interest and actually this thing goes to um, e to the negative Euler Mascheroni constant. Meaning in today's improvised session we are actually going to calculate this thing. This looks extremely interesting. Since the exponential function is continuous, I think uh, there's a card driving around and happy sorry. Since this thing is continuous it means that natural log of this thing is actually going to go to negative um, Euler Mascheroni constant. We already derived an integral representation for that. We are going to see how this turns out. I'm going to close the window and see you in a second. <laughs> So, how can we start with this? I mean, at first I'm definitely going to rewrite this argument right here as e to the l and something, okay? And then we are going to see where this actually goes. So this limit I'm going to denote it as capital L is nothing but, okay, basically we are going to have e to the 1 over x natural log of x factorial. Like I said, exponential function is continuous, meaning we can track the limit to the inside and just take a look at the limit as x approaches zero of this thing. I didn't really think too much about it. Up until now, that's why it's called an improvised session. I'm just doing things here that really piqued my interest at the first side. Um, I mean, the most natural thing we could probably do is treat this as a discrete variable at the moment or just use the definition right here. Um, or the factorial. Let's just take a look at this other limit. So limit of this thing right here approaching zero. Okay. Limit of 1 over x times natural log of x factorial. I mean basically we just have okay this thing right here is natural log of x times x minus 1 times blah 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 up until 1. Okay. So this is going to give us the limit as x approaches zero of we're going to get natural log of x over x and then we are going to get plus natural log of x minus 1 over x plus dot 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 up until natural log of 1 over x. But I don't think that it is good to consider something in the limit being discrete because our limit in itself is a continuous thing. Um, I don't know if this goes anywhere just because natural log of x over x even in the limit so at first we have a negative infinity times zero situation if you slope it all that's going to give us the limit of one over x as so x approaches zero is going to diverge to infinity um, but it wouldn't be any good right I mean that wouldn't be any good so this thing in itself would already diverge so I I don't think that this discrete approach right here is going to get us anywhere. Um, let me see. I mean we we have other de definitions. If we really want to arrive at negative Euler Mascheroni constant I think it would make sense to actually use the Weierstrass definition right here because in the Weierstrass definition we already have our Euler Mascheroni in it. Okay e to the Euler Mascheroni times x. Also, if we take the natural log right here, the Weierstrass definition, just like the Euler definition, is defined as a product, meaning the natural log of a product is just the sum of natural logs. That's something that should work out. We are going to give it a try. Yeah, right. Why not give it a try? Um, at first, let me recall what the Weierstrass definition was. I mean, if we have 1 over gamma of x in this case, it's going to give us uh, x times e to the Euler Mascheroni x. Then we have this product, okay, being greater or equal to 1, and also we have this same factor we have in our um, Euler definition. Or the, those are a lot of definitions I have in my head. I just have to go through it. So 1 plus x over k times e to the negative x over k, right? 
that should be okay. But one problem here, I shouldn't use this how it is right now because we are dealing with x factorial. I guess this would um, this wouldn't work if we would use gamma of x because that's just x minus one factorial. We can make use of the function the equation, the recursive definition of gamma. X factorial is nothing but gamma of x plus one. Okay, so if we take a look at one over gamma of x plus one, that's the same as one over x times gamma of x. Okay, meaning if we have this right here, yeah, one over x times gamma of x, meaning we are going to be left with e to the or mascaroni of x, right? I mean, if we have one over x times this, yeah, x, and then we have this one plus x over k, e to the negative x over k. Yeah, this should work out. And also, if we then take the reciprocal of this thing, so raising everything by negative one to power, we are going to be left with our actually x factorial. Okay? Um, yeah. Let's see how this goes, actually. <laughs> okay. Let's continue. So what are we going to get? We are going to get the limit of 1 over x times the natural log. I'm going to write everything out. We have a lot of time on our hands. If we take the reciprocal of this thing, it's going to give us e to the negative gamma x times the product of um, e to the x over k in this case, and then one plus x over k to the negative one power. I hope you agree with me that this is probably true. <laughs> I don't want to do any mistakes here. Even if I do any mistakes, that's also terribly fine because it's just some um, improvised calculating right here. Okay, natural log property tells us that we can actually break this up into the sum of those parts in here. If we break this um, in, uh, up into the sums of those parts, okay, in, in normal case we have this going to infinity, this product, so we have times the limit as, for example, n approaches infinity of this product right here from k being equal to 1 to n. Natural log is continuous. Also, this thing should converge absolutely, if I remember correctly, meaning we can actually track this limit to the outside. Then we can take this, the product, turn this into a finite summation, track it to the outside, and then apply the limit once again to the product. Meaning overall, we are just going to break everything up. This is nothing but the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over x. Big brackets right here. We're going to have the natural log of e to the negative gamma x. Then we are going to have plus some running from, yeah, that's an infinity boy, k being greater or equal to one of, okay, what we can actually do is we can once again take the natural log in here on both parts and turn this into addition. So we have the sum of the natural log of e to the x over k plus the natural log of one plus x over k to the, um, negative one in here, okay? Yeah, right, to the negative one and then closing this right here off. Let's see where this actually gets us. Okay, we can track the negative sign to the outside, also natural log of e to the something is just the something itself, meaning overall we are going to have the limit as x approaches zero of, this is going to give us negative gamma times x, over x is going to give us negative gamma. Okay, this is already really good. And the limit of a constant is just the constant in itself. Yeah, we, we want to arrive here, meaning overall this thing should evaluate to zero. Let's see where this gets us, okay. Okay, I'm applying the limit to this thing and now plus the limit. Okay, applying it now of one over x. Infinity boy. Natural log of this thing is just x over k. Minus, like I said, we're going to track it to the front. Natural log of one plus x over k. Okay, coolio. We can bring the one over x in here, meaning this is going to cancel out. And also we are going to have this over x. Let me see where this limit actually brings us because 
No, no, this, this doesn't diverge. I was just thinking about this situation where it would diverge. But the cool thing is we have this factor of 1 right here, 1 plus x. Meaning overall this should work out, let me see. Okay, we are going to have negative gamma then plus the limit as x approaches 0 of. Now we are going to have this bigger sum right here, meaning we are going to have 1 over 1 at first, okay? 1 over 1 minus the natural log of 1 plus 1 over 1, so that's x times 1 over k. So um, 1 over 1 times x, I'm going to put it like this, over x, and then positive 1 over 2 minus the natural log of 1 plus 1 over 2 times x over x plus dot dot dot. Meaning this factor in here is always the um, coefficient of this x part. Now, if we take the limit right here as x approaches 0, ln is on the positive branch always continuous, the real valued natural log. That means if we apply this limit here, that's always going to give us 0. So natural log of 1 on all of those terms is basically nothing but um, yeah zero. Okay, this is zero, and then especially over zero. So we can apply L'Hopital. That should work. Negative gamma plus the limit as x approaches zero of one over one minus. If we apply L'Hopital, so differentiating numerator and denominator respectively, this is just over one. Okay, always over one on those parts, and then one over this argument. So 1 over 1 plus x over 1 in this case times the inner derivative. This is going to vanish. x deri derivated differentiated differentiated is just 1, meaning it's going to give us 1 over 1 plus 1 half minus. Same should be right here. So 1 over 1 plus x over 2 times 1 half plus dot 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 up until infinity. Yeah, right. This this is really good. Thank you, Weierstrass, you fucking bad boy. If you apply the limit now as x approaches 0, this part is going to be 0, this is going to be 0, and so on, up until infinity. I could have probably just used this definition right here. Also, it's a matter of interchanging limits right here, if we can actually do this. So interchanging this limit with this limit right here. We probably can because this probably converges absolutely like hell I care. So this is always just one, all those coefficients, okay? This is just one, meaning we're going to be left with one minus one is zero. <laughs> one half minus one half is zero. This is going to go up until infinity. Meaning this whole limit is going to be zero, leaving us with negative gamma in the limit. And our limit especially was e to the limit of this thing, meaning we're going to get e to the negative gamma. Did I just say lambda? Never mind. Negative Euler Mascheroni constant. Okay, um, I guess that's the whole improvised session. I think this worked pretty smoothly once again. That wasn't too hard. Thank goodness we have the Weierstrass definition that's already combining gamma and gamma. So that's pretty good. Can't we do this simpler? I mean, we can use L'Hopital. Um, let me check for a second. If we have the natural log of x, no, if we just go for x factorial, okay? No, okay. We we are going to go for this. Okay, so we have natural log of x factorial over 1 over x. Natural log is continuous. We can bring the limit to the inside. Now x approaches 0, okay? If we interpret this as the gamma function, so gamma of x plus 1, let me see. Okay, um, so we are going to have the limit of natural log of gamma of x plus 1 over x. This thing right here should also be absolutely convergent and continuous in the positive reals everywhere, mean, meaning we can track the limit to the natural log and then into here, meaning we are going to get gamma of 1. This is 0 factorial. This is nothing but 1. So natural log of 1 is actually 0 over 0 situation. 
I just got the idea because we use L'Hopital's rule right here actually and we have derived this thing right here. This is going to give us um, the limit as x approaches zero of this thing differentiated. This differentiate is nothing but the digamma function of x plus one over yeah one. Okay, <laughs> just the digamma function of x plus one. Oh, it has to do with the integral. This is, <laughs> this is so cool. If we now apply the limit here, so that's defined as an infinite summation. So you see, um, this is going to give us just the digamma function of one. Okay, and this thing should converge absolutely. We can bring the limit to the inside. It should also be continuous in the positive rears. Never mind. Digamma of one is nothing but negative Euler Mascheroni constant. I recently uh, uploaded this video regarding this this um, two brother thing. You are going to find it in the description. Okay, um, it just, <laughs> this way was way easier, but I just didn't get the idea to do something simple like this. Um, but I think this approach is also pretty cool, making use of the Weierstrass definition. So you see, those definitions really have a purpose. That's cool. That's so cool. <laughs> um, yeah, if you did enjoy this improvised session, please like and subscribe and recommend channel if you like. If you want to support channel a bit more, dab on them haters. And up until the next video, have a smart people day. See ya.